Alright, cool. So one can be stand here. Grab one, stand there. Alright. Either or, Jeff. Doesn't matter. Alright, so we're going to go. So for. Um, so, first exercise is. So, once we've done our matrix, we've done our three different planes of motion, we've basically uh, had, a, had a visual assessment of the, who's done what, etc. Excuse me. No, you're okay. Get that done. <laughs> so, um. So we're going to go squat, overhead press. So, so, so the whole principle of the squat is, so if I were giving instructions, I would say, keep the weight in the heels, keep the chest high, have a touch down, and then bring it overhead, then twist it, then bring it down. So you'll still see people screw this up, but basically I've got my squat with overhead twist, just goes like that. So now if someone has problem with that, um, low back problems, sometimes if someone has low back problems, they're saying, that really hurts my low back. So I'll say, bring it in super tight. Because if it's out here, second I get here, my low back has to take all that load. If I have them bring it in tight to the body, so play with that yourselves right, real quick. Just go close to the body, bring it overhead, twist it, close to the body, overhead, twist it, good. Now bring it far away, twist it, far away, twist it. Do you feel the difference in that? Yeah. Or alternatively, I can say, reduce the range of motion. If someone says they have shoulder problems, I can go here, twist it, here. So what I've done with the shoulder problem is I, I've said, I know that up here is typically where shoulders start to hurt, mostly because that's when shoulder blades get unstable. So I'm going to go squat, twist, so just give me that one real quick, good. Or someone might say, my knees really hurt, so in which case I would say, well in that case I still want to make it tough for you, just give me a baby squat, twist, baby squat, twist. And do that for me and just stop right here, don't bring it all the way down. We just stop there. And what I find is it's actually harder on the shoulders because the shoulders don't get that unloading that you get when you get to go through a full range of motion. Good. Does that feel good? Good. Stay right there. So I've got scroll over to us. Reduce range of motion. Okay, cool. So if I said I have bad knees, I could go that reduce range of motion or I could do a tilt instead of a squat. So let's go here. We're going to go tilt overhead tilt overhead. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure I've got about a 10, 20 degree bend in my knees. I don't want, I never want completely straight legs because uh, I always want, I always want softness in all joints. Sometimes I want, I want more emphasis in one joint than the other, but I always want just a small amount of softness just there so I can just go 10, overhead, twist. And now, now what I'm doing is I'm making sure that the knees don't really play any part in this at all. Now if someone says that that hurts, and they've got their feet way wide and turned out, then what that might mean is that basically their knees are caving in in the middle. In which case I might say, come narrow and give me toes in. Same thing. Okay? So in other words, if someone has, if someone has like their knees that are caving in and they say, my knees hurt, I'll say, well yeah, obviously your knees hurt. So if I bring the toes in, so, because the principle goes that often we'll hear people say, track the knee over the second toe. However, if I'm out here and the knees say, I've got tight hips, so I'm, I'm going as far wide as I can, and the, and the feet say, let's get wide, different people have different dysfunctions for different reasons. But if I see the knees caving in like that, and they're going, my knees hurt, why do my knees hurt? Then rather than say, well, do, track them out, that, that means it, it has to be a conscious decision with each one I do. And they might go, that means that feels better. But to me, it's an easier fix to say, bring them in, so that way the groin doesn't get lengthened out as much point the toes in slightly, okay, and all of a sudden, the knees are going to track perfectly over the toes. That might be the fix that they need. But that, or at the same time, if they're right here, sometimes, to say, and some, sometimes if they're here, and sometimes the best thing to do is to take them out and take them wide. But the first place I would go would be, not foot position, but just tilt. Give me that tilt. Good. Uh, let's see. Tilt not squat, nothing in the red zone for the shoulders overhead, and then an also challenge would be just give them a heavier weight. You can also add like a, a jump to it. Okay, so then push up with serious strap. Crap. So if I go just right here, so for push up wise, I can go, if someone gets scared, if some, if someone has like a low back that's diving forward diving forward, what I can do is I can go, give me a bent knee. Because when I do that, then it's really a lot more obvious to them when their hip starts to dive forward. If I can just go, give me a bent knee, what I do typically here, if I'm here, 
then the hips can really dive forward. If I bend that knee, then all of a sudden the hips, by bringing this knee up, what I'm doing is I'm tilting the pelvis back. So the more I can bring that knee, knee up, the less likely the pelvis will be to tilt forward. The low back is diving forward more often than not because the pelvis tilts forward, so then the low back just follows. But if I go here, then I've, then I've created a little bit of extra tilt. I could even say, give me that. Okay, but then, then if I've got a beginner, then they've only got one, like they've only got three points of contact now, and they get a little bit too unstable. If I just go, give me that, you know, to stay on toe, then they can do that. Okay, good. I can also go reduce range of motion. If they have shoulder problems, I wouldn't want to go deeper, I would want to go less. So push up, push up there. Use this ball for padding. Use sandbell for padding. So yeah, so if they're on push-ups just on the ground, I could put a sandbell under their knees if their knees have troubles with it. Uh, if, sh if their shoulders don't like to push up at all, if they walk in basically like you know, like this, going up with some shoulder stuff or, or like this, then I'm just going to give them pulls. If they do pulls, sometimes if the shoulder problems are really bad, then the pulls won't work. I would encourage you to try different grips. Sometimes guys like that grip better, sometimes they like that grip better, but I would say play with it. But, but first say, just give me a pull. If they go, and 80% and, um, and of the time they'll say, doesn't hurt. Um, good. Feet deep. So yeah, so when you got that push up, you can take the feet further back, further back. The more horizontal, closer to the horizontal they get, the more challenging that push up's gonna be. Uh, okay, lungs with a viper uppercut. So. So let's go, so grab a viper. So we're gonna go lunge with uppercut. So now if I go lunge forward, so give me a right leg forward, left hand forward. Like that, good. So, so if I freeze right there, but think about what just happened is, as I bring that left hand forward, the shoulders rotate. Now, but unfortunately the right foot's forward, which means my hip is basically facing left while my upper body faces right. So my shoulders are facing right while my hip's facing left. So if my low back doesn't like twisting, then this is gonna be a challenging exercise for me. How do I fix that? All I need to do is I need to say, okay, right hand forward, right leg forward. Okay, which way am my hips facing? My hips facing left. My upper body is, is probably facing left. Certainly facing more left than it was before. Are you with me? So now if someone says my low back doesn't like that, I can say, instead of giving me a twist, give me that. And they'll think you're a genius because they'll say like, that doesn't hurt. But the reason it doesn't hurt is because what you haven't done is gone to that low back and said, twist up. Now, the low back usually hurts because the hips are too tight and the hips don't allow that rotation to happen. So the low back has to do the rotation for the low back. But that's for another day to discuss. But if someone asks why is that, you can say probably your tight hips aren't allowing the, aren't allowing the hips to rotate. So the low back is doing it for the hips. Good. Same uh, to uppercut. Use lunge plan. So alternatively, if the knees are bugging you, so if they say the knees are bugging me doing that, then instead of going forward, we can go side. So try that for me. So just go, give me a forward one with the right leg. So feel that, good. So now you can see how when you go forward, that knee has to slow down the body, stop it, and then push off to reverse it. As opposed to if I go to the side, then I'll allow, I'll allow more of the hip muscles to be used to stop the body and then return back. Good. And now if the knee really, now if the knee was bugging somebody even more, I could say, reach out and then come back. You with me? So now what I've done is I've gone, give me like an uppercut, but like a, a lower cut, if you will. Almost like you're playing croquet. So you're gonna push away from the body in the sagittal plane, we're gonna move the upper, move the lower body in the frontal plane. Can we do that again? So I'm gonna go sideways with the lower body, but front to back with the upper body. So I'm still doing this movement, but now I'm going here. You with me? I'm not going this way, I'm going here. So right now you're, you're lunging towards me, but you're also uppercutting towards me. I want you to uppercut towards those green mats, because that would be a sagittal plane uppercut. No, no, nothing backwards. But, but right now what you're showing me is, that's fine, do that. So right now what you're doing is a sagittal plane uppercut. So now keep doing what you're doing, but instead of uppercutting to shoulder height, I want you to uppercut to knee height. There, now you got it. Good. So what you're doing now is you're going, well actually sorry, but I want you to uppercut the knee height with the left hand as you go to the left. Sorry, with the right hand as you go to the right, left. 
there. You got so but you, what, what I'm seeing you doing is that. I want to see you doing that. Better? Good. Good. Show me that, Jeff. Good. Good. A couple more times. Good. So you can see Jeff's going to the side, but he's trying to really emphasize that for that, that sagittal plane or sagittal plane, frontal plane. Like that. Good. So that movement right there. So that right there can take plenty of load off a client's knees, so they can still be doing the same exercise everyone else is doing. All you've said is, you know, go a little lower with the uppercut and go sideways instead of forward. Um, keep the uppercut low is what we do if they have bad shoulders. So sometimes I'll have clients go here, that hurts. I'll say, okay, just go to belly button height. Okay, that feels great. Uh, and again, have your waist an easy way. Squat with one arm cable pull. Okay, so in this circuit, I've got one, two, three, four, five people. Okay? Of five circuits. So if I have five people, I could do this. If I have three people, or if I have six people, and I decide I want to do two sets of, I want to do three groups of two people, then all I'm going to do is just choose any of these exercises that I feel best fit this group, but make sure I include a gate, because I need a gate in each, in each set. You guys understand this, but I'm trying to emphasize it as well for new trainers that might be watching. So, so right now on this option, I know I'm going to want a squat with one arm cable pull for my gait. If so, so let's go with that right real quick. Am I in, Jeff? Sweet. All right. So this is my gait means we're going to count, so you give, you give me a count now. If I'm going like super fast, then you might say, Jamie, awesome job, give me 20. Because I'm more interested in time under tension than I am reps. Because some, some groups say, do 12 reps. But my point is, if I do 12 reps like this, is that the same as the other person that does it like that? And I'm going to say that they're different. How are they different? What, all, I, all I need to know is that I know what sort of time range I'm looking for. I'm looking for between 10 and 15 reps, done at a moderate pace. You might say, I know I'm going to do a big cardio blast right after this, so I only want a short set. Or you might say, I know I, I'm emphasizing different things in this workout, so I might say, I want a longer set. Or I know I'm going to give them two sets of the same one, so I might say, go double, double eat every set, or something like that. So I might go, give me 10, and then rest five seconds, and then give me another 10. Uh, so right now, so I've got two arm cable pull. So if someone has a low back issue, I'm going to give them two arm cable pull. Can you cross that one? With a split stance. Again, the reason being because if I have feet neutral, then it makes it easy for the low back to dive forward. So if I'm here, it makes it really easy for the low back to jump forward. If I go here, then my body all of a sudden has a better space of support. It's, less, it's, it's not as good here, but that's okay. I'm not worried about anything side to side. I'm worried about controlling this. So now I might go, instead of going one arm here, I'm going to go, give me a split stance, give me 10 this way, and then give me 10 this way. I'm always going to want to go down and out, up and in. Reason being, because when I drop down to pick something up, I drop down to pick it up, and then I bring it into my body. It's pretty rare that I drop down and try to push something away. So, or, or sorry, it's pretty rare that I, that I drop down to try and pull something to me. I'm often trying to pick it up. So, that, so the connection of, the, of the, uh, the posterior chain is going to be such that I'm going to want to activate the glutes, hamstrings, and back muscles as I stand up. If you're, if you're doing one arm and you decide to do a split stance, always do the, or 90% of the time, unless you have a really good reason for it, I'll go this leg forward, this leg back. So I'm going to go squat, pull, squat, pull. If, if someone says, that hurts my low back, then I would go, okay, I don't want to twist, because when I have this left foot, left foot back, hips are facing that way, shoulders are facing that way, low back has to twist. They say, that hurts my low back, I would go, okay. Now, as I do it, I've got my head facing the right, and my shoulder faces the right. I feel like I'm doing the same exercise, okay, and to the naked eye, I might look that way. But I, I can say, does that hurt your low back now? And they'll say, no. And then you can explain, and if you want, you can look like a genius, so you can just go, yeah, that's fun, though. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, I am a genius, that's true. All right, so, 
So back to here. So I got my scroll with one on cable pull. Okay. Or if it, if it bugs my low back, I can go two. I can go split stance, two hands. Okay. Or if it bugs my knees, I can go hold a position in a squat. Okay. So I'm not going to go up and down. I'm just going to say, does it feel good there? Yeah. Okay. Good. Hold it there. So I can go hold it right there. So don't give me up and down. Just hold that position where it doesn't hurt. Okay. So I'm still working the legs. The hamstrings still have to activate. And it doesn't bug you. Uh, if I were to add a little bit to it, I might say, okay, if the, if the low back's good and I don't want them to go deep, then I might say, just stand on one leg with this knee slightly bent. And I'm, again, I'm standing on the right leg, pulling with the left hand. The reason I'm doing this is because as I run, as I run, this left leg, so this right leg is going to be on the ground as this elbow comes back. So I'm going to be going here, so I'm basically pulling it through here. So, so with, any, with any movement I do, if I've got one leg on the ground, I typically want to be holding, pulling or pushing with the opposite hand. So there. And all I'm doing is I'm just saying, see that soft right there? And then they feel like it's a great exercise. The knee's not being challenged in a sagittal plane. It is being challenged somewhat in a rotational plane though. You with me? So if someone says, that hurts my knee too, uh, I can mentally go, okay, rotational stuff's not going to feel good which helps me know that probably lunges with rotation are probably not going to feel good either. <coughs> but some people will go, I'm fine this way, but like, you know, I'm, I'm horrible that way. And that tells me, okay, the knee doesn't like rotation. Again, coming back to what plane of movement does it like, what plane of movement doesn't it like. Okay, uh, and then slower reps. So I might go, or I might go stand the bottom half, like that. So instead of slower reps, I could go there, or I could go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You can also put the weight vest on them if you're feeling really spicy. Serious strap pull. Okay. Instead of for the push-ups, where? Oh yeah, uh, shoulders and shoulders. So remember, same palm position from the serious strap pull. Because if someone has a push-up problem and you've given them the pull movement for the serious strap, and they've said that, so over here, if they've gone, push-ups hurt, if they've gone, ah, then you've gone, okay, give me pulls, then if you've gone there and they've gone, ah, that hurts, but if you said palms up, and they've said, oh, palms up doesn't hurt at all, then I would remember that here. And I would say, okay, cool, before you said, that hurt, but this didn't hurt. Is that true? Okay, give me that same hand position now. So what you've done is you've, you've built on your knowledge of what you learned from the previous, from the previous exercises. All right, squat with one arm cable pull. Okay, that right there. Step up with Sam, with Sam belt overhead press. So now I could use any one of the multiple platform boxes we have. I could use the, uh, would you grab the, um, the step up box for me? The Reebok step? I can use um, the rail yard. And now we have the half boxes. So if you have someone who's tall like me, you can give them the half box as well, make it one and a half. Or if you have someone who has bad knees, you can just give them a half box. And that's typically good for anyone. The knife in between is the, is the Reebok step. So now this guy, also, he used to have handles, but now I just <coughs> kick him in like that. So I could kick him in like that, make him nice and low. Okay, now I can go here, up, here, up. I can get my sandbell. So I'm, I'm just going to imagine I'm holding a sandbell. Actually, Jeff, would you grab my own rocker? Oh, sweet. Easy. So right here, now, I could, now if I want a little bit more instability, I can give them two sandbells to hold. So that way it's a little bit more unstable. It's a little bit less more control. Or I can have them hold one big sandbell. So right here, I'm going to go up, down, up, down. I want that knee to come up as if they're about to step up onto another step. So from here, up, here, up. Do I have that right? So, so, so stand with overhead press. For this, if I have someone whose ankles collapse in, then what I can do is I can go, put this at an angle. You got that, Jeff? So if I put this at an angle, if someone has an ankle that collapses down, I don't want to put them there. 
that would be a huge no-no if their ankle collapses down and they get knee pain. However, you'd be surprised the number of people that I've had who have walked in saying, I have knee pain, just a little bit of knee pain today. And I've gone, okay, what's that? And I've said, I have, a, I have a large amount of knee pain. And I've gone, okay, try it on this surface. Because what I've done is by putting them in an angle, I set the ankle in a supportive position. It's almost like buying them an orthotic for the exercise. And then I can go up, down, up, down. I also like it an angle because I can go try down here, or I can say try up here. Okay, Jodie Luna is great with this because her ankles collapse down really badly. You can put her on any sort of, any sort of height level here. I mean, now she's good enough to be able to do it in the rail yard, but also you'll see sometimes the rail yard will be set at an angle as well. Same thing you can do. Okay? <coughs> All right. So, but if I go, I'll also, Jeff, well, leave, leave it there. I'll also show you something else you can do with this real quick. One of the beauties of the design, so I can pick this guy up, slide this back, I can lock it in, and all of a sudden I've got myself an incline press bench. If I had a small group and I needed a, a bench for something, I wouldn't necessarily put them on this, but I would put a mat down, and then all of a sudden I can give them this, or a, or a bicep curl lying back. If I have someone who's really, their low back's really bugging them, but I don't want them to feel left out, then I can sit them on this. The second I sit someone down, their core falls asleep, it doesn't really have to work, it just powers down. However, if I still want someone to feel active or in the workout, then that's the price I'm willing to pay. As long as I've explored all my other options first. I don't want them that I, I, while I don't want them to miss out on the benefits of a full body movement, I don't want them to walk away feeling like they're, they're not really that good because they couldn't do the movements that we gave them. I want, I want to have some in the back pocket. So this one, this one's a little tricky. You gotta pull it out and then pull it up and then you can close it down. So a bunch of different, bunch of different things you can use this for. All right, so, uh, so back to the step ups. All right, so give me the alterations. What does it say? Yeah, step up, sample, overhead press. So we use our steps. So we talked about that. Low back instability is going to be if someone just comes up here, or you'll see people do this. See what I'm doing right now. So if you get side shot, I'm going like this. So I'm just keeping my butt back. What I want is that. I want that hip to come forward because again, when that knee comes forward, it'll bring the pelvis neutral. Okay? Because it's pretty. It's, it's more often for someone to have a low back that curves forward than it is for them to have a low back that, that dives back. Uh, let's see, bicep curl with two sandbells. So now if I don't want to go overhead press, okay, I can just go here, up, here, up. Okay? Or if I want to get fancy, I can give them something where I'm going, give me a flip, give me a flip, give me a flip. Just like that. So then all of a sudden, it becomes a mental game. I'm adding instability in the sense of um, mental coordination required. I'm making it, I'm giving them more things for their body to think about as they do the exercise. And heavier weight. Easy. So that would be a set. That would be, a, that would be circuit number one. Okay? Does that feel good, Jeff? Good. Alright. So cut that off. Turn that off. Yeah, right? Just say, hey Liz, why don't you like just buy six jackets and say they're all for you? Exactly the same. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. She's like, in case I have layers underneath. Yeah. That's right. No, I mean, well, I can. She gets sixty percent off. Full time staff get sixty percent off. It's crazy. I know, right? Oh yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm sure she can't. Yeah, no, actually, well, I, I can get. Um, I spoke to the guy yesterday. I can get twenty five percent off jackets. And he's going to send me some stuff that the Denver Swim Team did. Because basically he's talking about like, you know, like, do we get shirts and stuff like that. So he's, so it would just some sort of like, you know, something from Lulu. So, so yeah, so 25% off. So he's going to, apparently Denver Swim Team, whatever that is, got a whole bunch of stuff from Lulu. So he's going to send me the quote and the printing. Because the challenge with, the, with that stuff is it stretches. Mm -hmm. So you can buy something, but like then if it's going to stretch and like look like crap, then, you know, then what's the point? Yeah, so... But they've, they've been playing with some different uh, shirts and stuff. Oh, I know. The scuba hoodie. Yeah, how much are they like? 200 bucks each. Some of that. Like. <laughs> scuba hoodie, yeah. My, I know. I actually have, I have a love-hate relationship with the scuba hoodie. Because it has like the thumb holes. And the arms are just too short. Like I can wear them, but like I, like I, I have to stand like this. So 
way I'm like, I'm wearing like, argh, argh, and I just like cuts in my thumb. I'm like, why? I want to wear you. All right, I'm just waiting for a longer cut. So it'll come out, I'm sure. All right, so, um, so the purpose of the master class, real quick, is to um, give you guys a, a house, so to speak, in that if uh, people walked in and you had a bunch of different variety of things happening in the class, one thing I realized is that we've shown a lot of exercises, but we haven't talked a lot on variations we can do for the exercises. Generally speaking, there's some things we can do that we can go to. Um, so what I'll try and do is, part of the idea is to give you guys this and, and, and answer any questions and dig deeper on these variations that I'm presenting to you today. But also another piece is so that, that way when we have a new trainer sign up, they can have a master class that they can go to. But also that means if you were to attend their classes, you would know what they should know, what they shouldn't know. So to speak. So that way we can all sort of help each other get better um, uh, in a uh, sort of a, a team in a team way. Because I know that one of the things I'm really realizing is as I get feedback from our people is that one of the things that was really important at the start was that we chose trainers that had like passion, uh, you know, and, and sort of like you know, a, a, a willingness or an enthusiasm for learning. And so um, and so uh, and having you guys be here, obviously, that's actually really paid off really well because. I'm just constantly getting like you know, feedback from the members saying like, wow, these guys really do care. They really, I really do feel like I'm, I'm taken care of. I don't feel like I'm being lectured to. I feel like I'm, you know, I'm involved and I can ask questions. One of the, uh, some of the feedback I'm getting is that, is that it's a temptation for us to make our class super hard. And in making it super hard, that means that like, you know, we can sort of feel like we're adding more value to it. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that while I don't have a problem with, this, with us making classes hard, I want to make sure that maybe at the start of class, and I'll, I'll probably put this in, we'll probably send it like some sort of, when we do systems in December, we'll probably put it into the um, meeting. But one of the things that I want us to say at the start is, you know, this class will be hard for some, not as hard for others. Most important part is that if you need a break, take it, it's your workout. And that way we can give people permission, because I know that um, Lorella this morning, or no, Janae, said that she was doing your class, but no, uh, J Jody, it's this morning Red Rock was saying she was doing your class the other night. She said, and I told Rebecca, I just need to take a time out. Rebecca was like, totally cool. And that was great. Like, I was like, oh, that's awesome. Like, you know, because I know that obviously, you know, you have high classes, but the, uh, but the same time for people to know that, like, I can go and it's a hard class, but I don't, but, but I'm going to trust the instructor who is going to trust me that if I need to take a time out, I'm going to take a time out. And there's going to be no judgment, you know, uh, from the instructors uh, on, that, on that level. That's so one of the things where we want it to be hard and we need to keep progressing the people that we have. But as new people come in, the worst thing that could happen would be a new person comes in and they're like, hey, everyone, I'm new to the workout. And then they're like, oh, God, I'm dying. So <laughs> what we want to do is, and, and, we, and we've all seen that with a new person who, like, you know, they have to, like, I, I know for me when I'm teaching classes, like if I had a new person come in teaching this master class, I might say, okay, which one of these is going to be the most cardiovascularly challenging? And then I'd say, okay, cool, if it was, like, say, if there was some squat jumps in there, I might say, okay, cool, of this circuit, squat jumps. So then once I show the circuit, I'll go into that person and I'll say, hey, for the squat jumps, I just want you to grab a drink of water and hang out. Okay, so take that, take that one. You get, I'm, I'm going to give you a time out for that one. Okay? And that way I can plan ahead. And so if I tell them that, then, then if I give them permission ahead of time, then they might say, I'll be fine, I can do it. And I say, I know, but you've got a whole workout to go through. So just take that time out for me. Just trust me on this one. Something like that. Anyway, but that's a variation within the master class. So if you have a new person, feel free to take one, take one away but, but you tell them. Don't see them struggling and then have them ask for the timeout. In other words, for, if, we can, if we can be proactive, then that means the person is more likely to do it because, because we gave them permission, A, but B, it also reinforces our position as the instructor, as the person who's leading the workout. And if we can anticipate that, then that gives us the ability to make them feel like we actually are watching them, caring for them, trying to give them the best workout for where they're at, or something like that. Does that make sense? Cool. So uh, to go through these, so uh, I've done different. I've focused on different areas for different exercises where I feel the best variation was possible. And if you guys have ideas for different variations as we're going through it, feel free to chime in. Um, I know that uh, Rebecca has a few different alterations with like hand position that you use for uh, push-ups that sometimes can can make it really easy for people. So I'm, I'm interested to hear about that. Um, five five major areas would be um, so that I can make it easier or harder. Uh, the first one would be joint emphasis. And uh, I went through this on Thursday. I'll just go through it briefly. But the idea being that, like, you know, if someone is squatting and they have problem with their problems with their knees, 
I could say joint emphasis, but maybe if someone is squatting and, and the knees are diving super forward, if I were to say try to drop the butt back like you're sitting on a chair, or try to put more weight in the heels, what I'm really doing is I'm taking less emphasis off the, off the joints of the knees and putting it more through the hips by having them drop back. In other words, if I'm dropping back, then the knees aren't really dipping as much, aren't bending as much, as going through a, as much of a range of motion. Uh, I could also, by changing the joint emphasis, say, uh, go, go, go directly to a joint and say, instead of bending that back leg during a lunge, where it really hurts that back leg, just keep the back leg straight and don't bend it as much. That way you can still do an exercise. The main thing I want to do is, in, in wherever possible, is to keep giving them the same equipment and, a sim and the same exercise, but maybe change just a variable or two. So that way they don't feel like everyone else is doing a lunge lever cut and I'm doing sit-ups or push-ups, because that's typically what these people expect, because that's what they get at every other boot camp class, you know, personal training experience. If the trainer goes, oh, your shoulders hurt, uh, let's do chin-ups, let's do, let's do sit-ups instead. And that's sort of like the, the classic go-to. What I'd rather do is have a few variations on push-ups or, or some sort of way that we can give them exercises still on the ground, still using a viper, if, if we, or just still using a roller if we're having them push-up on a roller or a roller board or whatever. But the main, main, piece of the main piece of the puzzle is that I want it to look similar and I want it to be something that we can create a quick, easy change that can be described verbally in just one or two sentences. Is it a hard thing to do? In some situations, yeah. Is it, worth, is it worth fighting to try and get to that point where we can quickly make a change for a person that we know will work based on information we've already seen from them? Yeah, it's certainly worth it because then that's where it truly really becomes a personal experience uh, because we're building up information that they've already given us. Okay, so one would be joint emphasis. Uh, two would be range of motion. Uh, actually, and I could say joint emphasis being if I'm doing push-ups and I have my hands narrow, that's going to be a lot of shoulder, a lot of elbow, a large range of motion. If I go hands wide, then that push-up is going to be a smaller range of motion, more emphasis on the chest and less on that shoulder rotation. Now, I might say that if someone, if I know the elbows are fine going this way, going uh, in a horizontal plane versus in a sagittal plane, then, I, then I'm going to say, okay, I, I know that this is going to be easier for you than this, maybe because when you're here, I know I see this all the time, so I'm going to bring you down here, so it'll be much harder for you to go there. Or if, if someone has a problem here because their shoulders are way forward, I come out here, then then just maybe that's going to be better for them. The individual will the individual will will uh, will be able to tell you what feels better. But what's important is that we take that information or that information, and then build that on for the next exercise we give them. So that way we're not constantly learning the same information again and again and not doing anything with it. Uh, two would be range of motion. Any exercise, pretty much, we can we can reduce the range of motion. Uh, load. I've, I've done range range of motion slash load, meaning that. Uh, typically, if someone has knees that start to hurt around 45 degrees, if I say go slower, if I, if I change the tempo, number four, then that's one way to change the exercise. Another way to change it is just to say, I'm going to give you a heavier viper, but I want you to go through a smaller range of motion. That way the person feels like they're not so much being singled out as being like, I'm not as good. Because you might have people that are fit, but they're not necessarily, uh, they're not necessarily able to go this far because they did something to yank the shoulder while they were rock climbing or they fell off their bike or something like that. So what we can do is we can go, okay, let's go through a smaller range of motion, but if I give them a smaller range of motion, it's going to be less damaging to their ego if I give them a larger load to handle through that smaller range of motion. Plane of movement, uh, lunges are my favorite one for this. If someone has trouble with a, with a front lunge, I'll just give them a side lunge. And that tends to solve it basically about 70% of the time. I can combine two, so I could say plane of movement, instead of going a forward lunge, I'm going to go to a side lunge, but so, uh, so I go to a side lunge, and then they say that still hurts my knees, and I say, okay, cool, now give me a side lunge, but give me a big tilt. And now I'm still doing a lunge, but now I've got like more, more emphasis happening through the hip, I'm asking the hip to do the movement, not the knee. Still working the legs, still strengthening all sorts of good stuff, the knee is still getting some action, but not going through a range of motion where it's going to be irritated or inflamed. Make sense? Question so far. Sweet. Number four, tempo. Again, I can, I can adjust the load by saying, okay, I can go through a range of motion slower. In some cases, it's brutally hard. Or I can go tempo and I can go, okay, cool, we're going to do push-ups, but I know that this person loves going super fast and I know they have bad shoulders, so I'm going to ask you to go four seconds down, one second up. And then I, if I can think about how this speaks to that person practically, then, that, then that'll be great. In other words, if I can say, hey, Aaron, I know, you, I know you're trying to get strong with your push-ups, so go four seconds down, one second up, it's going to be great for building strength. All I've done is basically like, which is 
you know, let's say that, that I don't think anyone would say it's not true at all. So if I, uh, not, that you're, not that you're trying to build strength, but the, um, but that, that, that doesn't that, that doesn't build strength. So if I were to say that, then I would say, okay, cool. So that's the way I can do it. Or alternatively, with tempo, sometimes I've got people who I know, uh, say, a, a squat and pull movement. For a squat and pull movement, I can have them do that super slow, or I could add tempo. To, I can make it harder by going, you know, uh, slow down, fast up, uh, and I can I can have them do more reps at a faster tempo if it's something like uh, squat jumps, or something like 180 jumps, or something like step overs, or something like hop overs. I can make the tempo slower uh, by adding, like, say, a bit of a double hop. If I'm doing hop overs on the rail yard, I can go hop, hop, hop over, hop, hop, hop over. You'll see people create that slow their own tempo down. Or if I want to make it harder, I could say only single hop. And that way people have a harder time trying to fudge their way through it, so to speak. Because they might feel like they're doing an exercise, but they're going hop, hop, over, hop, hop, over. And in that hop, hop, it's a split second where they're giving themselves an extra cardiovascular rest. If you're okay with that, that's great. But what's important is that we know, so that way if, someone, if someone's going too hard, say the first workout, and they don't really know to pace themselves, then you can, you can change their tempo by saying, okay, for you, give me a hop, hop, hop over, hop, hop, hop over. They don't need to know what you're doing. All I'm saying is that we have a few different tools we can use to try and make it easier or harder. If I, again, by the same way, if I have someone who has problems going with an overhead press, and I say, okay, great, so this can be a bicep curl, they might go, well, this is just going to be dead boring. I can add instability. I could stand them on a BOSU board. I could stand them on a balance board. I can take one of the rail yards, flip it over, so it's going front to back, wobble, wobble, and then I can have them stand on that while they're doing their bicep curl. Or even just stand on one leg doing a bicep curl. What I, all of a sudden, that becomes much more than just a bicep curl to them. I can also make an exercise harder if I've got everyone doing the same exercise. And I can say, okay, great, I'm going to add instability to you by having you go either, you know, uh, I, can, I can add instability by putting a muscle at the end of range of motion by going more through. Is that bigger? One. Okay, cool. Five zeros, four ones. Yeah. Maybe someone's asking me to vote. Australia. All right, so <laughs> instability is a way I can make it uh, different. So that way, if I gave someone uh, a smaller load over here, and I don't want them to feel like a, I don't want them, to, I don't want to damage their ego, then I can add instability there. Great. So let's do this. Let's hop in. And um, so what I did was last time we went through. Or we, I've done a video already on uh, the active assessment. Do we have that with you? Do I still need to get that to you? Then last, on Thursday, we did the circuit number one. So let's just jump right into circuit number two, and that way you guys can watch the video on, um, on that. And then we'll do the circuit number two, the, the core posture, and then stretch with the lights out. And then goodbye. Goodbye. All right. You guys got questions?